now we are going to take a look at diabetes diabetes according to a common man diabetes diabetes is a disorder in which there is reduced level of insulin in the body and hence glucose is not taken up or glucose is not utilized in the body and due to this there is increased level of glucose in the plasma and the person is going to show some kind of symptoms like polyuria and thirst and poor healing of wound this is the concept according to a common man so to improve our knowledge we are going to look at diabetes in detail now diabetes is a disorder associated with pancreas pancreas histologically it is divided into two types exocrine part and the endocrine part now here you can see the structure of pancreas the structure is divided into four parts this is the head portion this is the neck this is the body and this is the tail the adult pancreas it weighs almost about 60 to 100 grams the endocrine pancreas it consists of microscopic collections of cells and these cells are called as islet of langerhans this islet of langerhans they are responsible for the synthesis and release of insulin the islet of langerhans they are greatly concentrated in this tail portion of the pancreas the islet of langer hands they are duct lace or we can say they possess no ductal system and they directly drain their secretory products into the circulation the pancreas it majorly contains uh, two types of cells first is major and the second one is minor there are four major types of cells beta cells it consists comprise of about 70 percent of islet cells and it is responsible for secretion of insulin the defect in the beta cells causes diabetes mellitus next type is the alpha cell it comprises about 20 percent of the islet cells and it is responsible for secretion of glucagon which induces hyperglycemia third type is the delta cells or the d cells they comprises about 5 to 10 percent of the cells and they secrete somatostatin this is responsible for suppression of secretion of both insulin and glucagon and the fourth type is the pancreatic polypeptide cells or f cells they comprise about one to two percent of the islet cells and they secrete pancreatic polypeptide having some gastrointestinal function there are two minor type of cells the first one is d cells it releases vasoactive intestinal polypeptide that is vip which induces glycogenolysis and hyperglycemia and causes secondary diarrhea by stimulation of gastrointestinal fluid secretion the second type of minor cell is enterochromaffin cells which are responsible for synthesis of serotonin serotonin um, it, it is in pancreatic tumors and may induce carcinoid syndrome. Now the endocrine pancreas, they are responsible for generation of the disorder, diabetes mellitus and islet cell tumors. Now we'll take a closer look towards diabetes. As per WHO, diabetes is defined as a heterogeneous metabolic disorder characterized by common features of chronic hyperglycemia with disturbance of carbohydrate, fat and protein metabolism. It is one of the leading cause of death all over the world. Around 25 million of population suffers from diabetes mediatus. The rate of increase is about 10% per year. The, why there is hike or rise in the uh, rate of the patients who suffer from diabetes is basically due to two things. The first one is obesity and the second one is reduced activity levels. And these are the two major contributing factors for production of diabetes. Almost 1.9 million cases are diagnosed every year who suffers from diabetes. India and China are major contributors to the world diabetic load. Diabetes mellitus is expected to continue as a major health problem owing to its serious complications like end-stage renal disease, ischemic heart disease, 
gangrene of the lower extremities and blindness in the adults the two factors which contribute to diabetes is sedentary lifestyle and poor eating habits they causes obesity ultimately leading to escalation of diabetes and this is called as diabetes epidemic as per world health organization diabetes mellitus is defined as heterogeneous metabolic disorder characterized by common feature of chronic hyperglycemia with disturbance of the carbohydrate fat and protein metabolism the uh, world health organization classifies diabetes into four types the first one is type 1 diabetes mellitus it constitutes about 10% of the cases in earlier days it was termed as insulin dependent or juvenile onset diabetes juvenile onset diabetes is named it was the name given because it was a uh, predicted that this type of disorder uh, diabetes mellitus occurs at a very early age and it was termed as insulin dependent because it was thought that insulin is the ultimate treatment for this type of uh, diabetes but nowadays days both this terminologies are not used to name this type 1 diabetes mellitus type 1 mellitus diabetes mellitus is again classified as type 1a diabetes mellitus and it is immune mediated in immune mediated diabetes auto antibodies are formed inside the body against the beta cells which are responsible for destruction of the beta cells and ultimately decreasing the production of insulin in the body type 1b diabetes mellitus the reason is idiopathic that is the reason is unknown the second type is type 2 diabetes mellitus and it comprises about 80% of the cases it is non insulin dependent or it is also termed as maturity onset diabetes it was thought that this type of diabetes it, it is induced after the age of 45 years but now this is not the case and also insulin is the ultimate treatment for this type of patients so now this both terms are obsolete these are the older terminologies the next uh, class is the other specific types of diabetes which, which constitutes about 10% of the cases the reasons are genetic defect of beta cell function due to mutation in the various enzymes genetic defect in insulin action diseases of exocrine pancreas endocrinopathy is drug or chemical induced diabetes infection induced diabetes or other uncommon forms of immune mediated diabetes mellitus and the fourth class is gestational diabetes mellitus gestational diabetes mellitus is a condition diabetic condition which occurs in almost 4% of pregnant ladies the, after the after delivering the baby the diabetes is the person gets cure of the diabetes mellitus but there are chances in future that this person might suffer from diabetes at a very early age now we'll see glucose homeostasis glucose homeostasis is regulated by the production of glucose it is also regulated by the glucose uptake and utilization of the peripheral tissues and it depends on the action of insulin and counter regulating hormones now we'll take a look at the pathogenesis depending on the etiology of diabetes mellitus hyperglycemia may result from the following it can result due to reduced insulin secretion or due to decreased glucose use by the body or due to increased glucose production first we'll see about normal insulin metabolism carbohydrate containing food is a source of glucose and glucose is a stimulating factor for both synthesis and release of insulin in the body the beta cells in the pancreas they are responsible for production of pre pro insulin it is an 86 amino acid precursor this pre pro insulin it undergoes proteolysis and during this reaction there is removal of one amino terminal and it give rise to pro insulin after that this pro insulin it undergoes cleavage and it results into insulin this insulin is stored in the secretory granules of the beta cells now let us take a closer look at insulin 
this is insulin we can see that insulin is a polypeptide it contains about 51 amino acid it is made up of two chains two polypeptide chains chain a it, it is made up of 21 amino acids and chain b it is made up of 30 amino acids this chain a and b it is linked together by a c peptide and disulfide bonds the c peptide is um, not easily cleaved by the uh, enzymes now we'll see how the insulin is released once the insulin is produced it is stored in the beta cell okay now we'll take a look at the release of the insulin this is the normal beta cell in normal condition uh, the polarity of the cell is maintained by ex expulsion of the k plus ions from the cell but when the body senses glucose this glucose is taken up by glucose transporter and this glucose transporter is known as glut2 this glucose transporter is independent of insulin once this glucose transporter senses the glu uh, elevated glucose level in the body the glucose is taken up inside the cell and it is utilized by the mitochondria for production of ATP. Once ATP is produced in the cell, this ATP is going to block the sulfonylurea receptor which is responsible for expulsion of K plus ions. The K plus ions, they cannot move out of the cell and um, there is membrane depolarization. Due to this membrane depolarization, there is increased influx of calcium inside the cell. Once there is increased influx of, influx of calcium inside the cell, iron is secreted out from the beta cells. And now this, sorry, insulin is secreted out of the beta cells and this insulin is responsible for glucose uptake into the all other parts of the body. Now we'll see action of insulin. On all cells, there is, uh, there is insulin receptor. This insulin receptor, it has tyrosine kinase activity. It is made up of four units. It contains two alpha units and two beta units. Once this insulin is taken up by this receptor, this receptor itself undergoes phosphorylation. Once this receptor is phosphorylated, it stimulates a cascade of other reactions. First, it is going to phosphorylate insulin receptor substrate 1, which will phosphorylate insulin receptor substrate 2, ultimately phosphorylating IRS3 and then IRS4. IRS4 is responsible for phosphorylation of GAB1. This GAB1 then initiates two chains of reaction, one is through activation of P13K and the second, in, second one is through MEQ. Both these substances, they are responsible for increasing glycogen, lipid, uh, lipid and protein synthesis. They decreases lipolysis and they are responsible for cell growth and differentiation. Now, the second effect of phosphorylating the tyrosine kinase receptor is it is responsible for activation of glucose transporter. This is insulin dependent glucose transporter and it is called as GLUT4. Once this glucose transporter is activated, it is sent towards the surface of the cell. It moves upwards and the glucose, it recognizes this cell, it binds with this cell and the glucose, it moves inside the cell and this glucose is utilized for energy production inside the cell. Now, insulin, it has got many functions to play in the body. The first function is anabolic. It is responsible for production of protein, glycogen, lipo lipogenesis and glucose transport. The second function is mitogenic function. In the mitogenic function, the insulin is responsible for DNA synthesis and cell growth and differentiation. So now we come to know by this diabetes is called as metabolic disorder because insulin has to play a role in metabolism of all other substances. Now we'll take a look at the pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes mellitus 
it occurs due to destruction of the beta cell mass when individual is born he contains normal beta cells at at the birth but the beta cells once the uh, person is growing in age the beta cell they themselves act as auto antigens and due to this they activate cd4 and t lymphocytes due to the activation of the cd4 and t lymphocytes it causes destruction of the beta cells the triggering factors for activation of cd4 and t lymphocytes is the infection and environmental factors so due to this there is absolute insulin deficiency no insulin is produced the mechanism includes genetic susceptibility autoimmune factors and certain environmental factors here the insulin level is low and glucose level in the body is high because the glucose is not utilized by the uh, uh, body cells now we'll see pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes mellitus it is more complex and it is multifactorial design a disease uh, it has greater greater role is played by genetic defect and hereditary now type 2 diabetes mellitus it occurs due to delayed insulin secretion related to glucose load which which is said to be as impaired insulin secretion and the second reason is peripheral tissues are unable to respond to insulin that is insulin resistance insulin resistance is mostly seen in obese people an impaired insulin secretion it is again multi multi constitutional factors in case of diabetes uh, type 2 here the insulin and the glucose level in the body both are high because the body is secreting the insulin the body is failing to utilize the secreted insulin so both the levels are high now we'll see clinical features clinical features of type 1 diabetes mellitus it was thought to occur below the age of 18 years and but now we know that it can occur at any age in initial 1 to 2 years of onset exogenous insulin requirement is very low because of the ongoing endogenous insulin secretion and this period is called as honeymoon period after this the beta reserve is exhausted and insulin requirement increases type 2 diabetes mellitus here the patients are older than 40 years and they are obese and due to sedentary lifestyle and poor activity levels it is also seen in children and adolescents or uh, the person who is suffering from type 2 diabetes mellitus he he can uh live a normal life up to 10 years before he get any type of symptoms and the chances of symptoms in type 2 diabetes they are very low now we'll take a look at the clinical features now this is the body of a person who is suffering from diabetes mellitus now the there is increased concentration of glucose in the body so the glucose it causes it is going to cause increase uh, osmotic pressure of the body fluid and due to this there is increased urination to maintain the osmotic balance a large amount of fluid is given out so the first feature is polyuria large amount of urine is given out due to the excessive urination there is polydipsia there is thirst uh, the person feels constantly thirsty then there is polyphagia um, eating uh, appetite is increased also due to the amount of glucose in the urine the person he suffers from genital itching or thrush also there is slow wound healing because of the uh, because when there is wound the activity of the bacteria it gets increased because of the glucose present in the blood also there is blurred vision in this type of patients and this patients they feel tired and lethargic there is weight loss in this type of patients the complications include in diabetes every cell and tissue undergoes biochemical and structural changes resulting into complications now we'll see the complications there are two types of complications first one is acute complications it includes diabetic ketoacidosis hyperosmolar ketotic coma hypoglycemia the second type is chronic 
complications. It includes atherosclerosis, diabetic micro angiopathy, diabetic nephropathy, diabetic neuropathy, diabetic retinopathy, and susceptibility to infections. Now, acute metabolic complications. The first one is diabetic ketosis. It is severe in case of type 1 diabetes and it is less common in type 2 diabetes. It occurs due to increased level of insulin and decreased level of glucose. Sorry, it occurs due to decreased level of insulin and increased level of glucagon. Due to the increased level of glucagon, there is increased gluconeogenesis. That is, production of glucose in this case is increased. And due to this, there is hyperglycemia. Blood glucose level increases, resulting into osmotic diuresis and dehydration. The decreased level of insulin activates lipoprotein lipase this lipoprotein lipase is responsible for conversion of adipose stores into free fatty acids now these free fatty acids they move into the liver and they get converted into fatty acyl coenzyme a this fatty acyl coenzyme a they they get transformed into ketone bodies the two basic ketone bodies are acetoacetic acid and beta hydroxy butyric acid the rate of if the rate of production is higher as compared to the utilization and ketone body excretion is compromised due to dehydration it leads to metabolic ketosis now we'll see clinical manifestation of ketoacidosis first there is mental confusion there occurs nausea vomiting there is deep and fast breathing anorexia and coma the second complication is hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic coma. It is common in case of type 2 diabetes mediators and this rarely occurs in type 1. It is caused by severe dehydration resulting from sustained hyperglycemic diuresis. The loss of glucose in the urine is so intense that the patient is unable to drink sufficient water to maintain urinary fluid loss and the blood sugar is extremely high and the plasma osmolality is high. So throm thrombotic and bleeding complications are frequent due to high viscosity of the blood and this can lead to increased rate of mortality. The third complication is hypoglycemia. It may result from excessive administration of insulin or missing a meal or due to stress. Hypoglycemic episodes are harmful as they produce permanent brain damage. The signs and symptoms include shakiness, increased sweating, dizziness, confusion and difficulty in speaking, nervousness or upset, headache, weak or tired feeling and constant hungriness. Hypoglycemia can occur in both the type of diabetes mellitus. Chronic complications include atherosclerosis. The cause for the accelerated atherosclerotic process is not known but possible contributory factors are hyperlipidemia, reduced HDL levels in the body, non-enzymatic glycosylation, increased platelet adhesiveness, obesity and associated hypertension in the diabetics. Diabetic microangiopathy. Microangiopathy of diabetes is characterized by basement membrane thickening of the small blood vessels and capillaries of the different organs and tissues such as the skin, skeletal muscle, eye and kidney. Similarly, type of basement membrane like material is also deposited in non-vascular tissues such as peripheral nervous tissues, renal tubules, and Bowman's capsules. The third complication is diabetic nephropathy. Renal involvement is a common complication and a leading cause of death in diabetes. The fourth complication is diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy is a leading cause of blindness in diabetics. Now we'll say diagnosis. Diabetes symptoms, that is polyuria, polydipsia, and an explained weight loss through this we can make that the person might be suffering from diabetes but it is better to go for 
concrete testing the for, uh, first you can go is you can check for a fasting serum glucose concentration and if the glucose concentration is more than 7 millimoles per liter or it is more than 126 milligram per dl then we can say the patient is suffering from diabetes mellitus or if the cm glucose concentration is above 11.1 .1 millimoles per liter or 200 milligram per dl or 2 hours after 75 gram anhydrous glucose is given to the patient in the oral glucose tolerance test random plasma glucose levels above 200 milligram per dl can indicate the patient is diabetic glycated hemoglobin level if it is above 6.5 percent then we can say the patient is diabetic with no symptoms diagnosis should be based on single glucose it should not be based on single glucose determination but requires confirmatory serum venous determination and it has to be done on the next day at least one additional glucose test uh, on the other day with the value in the diabetic range is essential either fasting or from the two hours post glucose low if the fasting value is not diagnosed the two hour value should be used now we'll take a look at the treatment and management the primary line of treatment is to control the blood sugar level without causing abnormally low levels of the sugar in the blood for type 1 treatment includes insulin exercise and diabetic diet in type 2 uh, it includes weight reduction diabetic diet and exercise when these measures they cannot control the diabetes then medications are used medications which are used for type 2 diabetes are um, that uh, the medications which can decrease amount of glucose produced by the liver it includes bioguanides metformin medications that increase the sensitivity of the cells to the insulin it includes thiazolidine dions uh, proglitazone pioglitazone and rosiglitazone and new medications like cymlin and amlin so with this we have completed diabetes mellitus thank you